Um, so yeah, so let's start. So just tell us a little bit about who you are, what your channel is, and sure. where people can find you. Yep, uh, my name's Matt Legrand, and the channel name is the same. I haven't come up with any sort of cool um, name stuff for the channel, although I do often, you know, go with like a swim, bike, run, rinse, repeat um, catchphrase that gets used everywhere uh, on shirts and stuff like that. Uh, and the channel is about triathlon and largely um, does deal with a lot of like triathlon products. You know, I do a lot of watch reviews, um, a lot of, you know, I, I did a power meter recently, um, bike computers, things like that. So that it does have a very tech influence uh, to it and product influence to it. But I also like to talk about like the general, you know, landscape of triathlon. Uh, I like to talk about, you know, um, things that are happening on triathlon within YouTube. And I like to uh, just try my best to promote the sport of triathlon because I do think it's an amazing sport. And here in the US, we've had a bit of a decline uh, in attendance for the sport. And so it was one of those things where it's like, you know, this is a sport I really like. It's a sport that I'm passionate about. You know, how do we get more people involved? And uh, And I figured, you know, some of that is helping people get started in the sport. And so, mm. you know, if you look back at my catalog of videos, it, some of them are like, you know, watches and things like that, but others are, you know, how do you get started swimming? How do you um, work on your swim breathing? Um, you know, what is a good duathlon workout to do? There's, mm. there's content on the channel that's there to help newer athletes. And there's definitely gonna be more of that uh as well as more product videos you know coming up soon too so so yeah so what i'm going to do now is i've got a little bit of a quick fire quiz so we can okay. find out a little bit more about you uh there are about 30 questions and they're all just kind of about your running cycling swimming etc okay sounds great okay. do you measure in miles or kilometers miles um, yep, grew, grew up in the States. Yeah, we use miles. Um, running, I ran track and field a long time ago. And so a lot of that racing was like 5K, 10K. So I can translate over to kilometers decently. And, um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I'm a miles guy for sure. Do you prefer road, trail, or on the track? Uh, trail, running, road, biking, um, open water swimming. Do you prefer sports nutrition or going for real food? Uh, I prefer real food, although I think there's the time and a place for um, your gels and the things like that, that that we don't love, but we need because it's the most efficient, you know, use of calories in a yeah. situation like an Ironman race or something like that. Definitely. Flat routes or hilly routes? Hilly routes. Are you a late night trainer or early morning? Um, I would say early morning. What's your bucket list race? So that one race that you would really like to do? Uh, like Norsemen or something like that. Like those are, <laughs> that's a, a really, if, if you're not familiar with this, like this crazy, it's a 5K swim. Um, I, I think the bike is around 100 miles, maybe a little bit more, and then you run a marathon, but the marathon is like straight up a mountain and you finish mm. at the top of a mountain. It's a crazy race, but that Absolute, race- Absolutely mental yeah, race. <laughs> it looks so gorgeous too. And uh, I mean, of course, another one would be Kona, uh, which I thought I would eventually qualify for. And now I'm like, hmm, might not, I might not make it to Kona. Maybe I'll just go, you know, over that way and just go on the course and do it or spectate or something like that. Do you prefer short, fast training sessions or long endurance sessions? I prefer long endurance. I always have, I've always been like a go long kind of guy. Um, but I think people, especially in triathlon, neglect the fast side of things. Mm. So, you know, if you grew up running, you're like, this is what you had to do, right? You have to do short, fast stuff. And I think when you start to work with athletes that are older they're like oh yeah i did three miles easy and how come i'm not ever getting faster it's like well you need to run fast to get to get faster so so do you train with music or without uh i pretty much train okay so i train without for the most part but i do like mm -hmm. to listen to podcasts 
on long runs. And then uh, when I do a, a hard workout on the bike, that's when I really like to have, you know, some sort of, um, I would say like old rock and like some sort of like decent beat, something yeah. um, that really gets you going. Kind and of like a power playlist. For, it totally for is. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, and I save those specifically because I'll watch a show if I'm doing, you know, an easy indoor bike ride. But if it's like a workout and it's like, this is going to be a hard one, I know I'm going to have to dig deep. Like I'll, you know, go to a specific playlist and I'll play some music that way. And I think that helps a lot. In fact, they've done studies where they've shown like, hey, your your peak yeah. performance has this increase. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's like a 3% increase just by playing music. And we were, you know, looking at it and we were like, oh, well, they had this closed marathon course when they ran the uh, sub two hour marathon. Mm -hmm when Kip Chogi ran that sub and they're like, why didn't they just blast music throughout that? Because that, you know, that's another little, you know, they're trying to do every little thing to get every to little really kind of help bit it, of performance. Like. And it was like, wow, that was something that they could have done extra that they neglected. Like, yeah, uh, come on people. Right there. <laughs> Definitely. No, I've got, um, I've got a power playlist specifically for some of my harder workouts and I will plug it in, turn the volume up and, Chris will get nothing out of me till the end of that session. So That's yeah, it awesome. definitely makes a difference, doesn't it? You need to publicly share your playlist now, because now I want to, I want to, <laughs> I want to borrow it for a workout. I will, um, I will, I will share it with you. I'll send you a link via email. It's uh, on Spotify. Do you stretch regularly? Yes or no? No, but this is my thing that I want to. <laughs> so we all have things that we want to work on, right? Yeah. And uh, that is on my hit list of things. And I want to try yoga. I mean, I've done yoga very regularly in the past. Mm -hmm. And I never would say that it was like that was the thing that got me somewhere or whatever. But it's a thing that, that I can do. And so it's something that I think I would like to add to the repertoire. And um, I really want to make that like, a hey, maybe I'll make a video where it's like, Yoga. I did yoga for 30 days. I think Ben has done, Ben Bridges has done one of that on his This Mess Be Happy channel. Um, do you prefer hot weather or cold weather? I prefer hot weather. Um, I guess, you know, I'm excited about every season. So for running, I love the colder weather. I've lived, you know, in a lot of different places in the US where it's very hot or very cold. And now I'm kind of in this like temperate climate out West actually the weather here is similar to where you are it's like we have like a rainy season and we're just starting to come out of this rainy season but um i think overall especially with biking i love the warmer weather and the sunny weather because you know a cold bike ride is is really no fun um, isotonic drinks or plain water plain water uh what's your go-to post-race food uh, <laughs> probably like beer, which, you know, I love, um, I love like a hoppy IPA beer or something like that, like post race. Uh, again, that's another thing that they've done studies on and it's not good for you. It does not help your recovery at all and things like that. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's still one of those fun things. It's a fun treat that I, I love to do. Uh, and I'll eat anything, right? Like food wise, like pizza so good my wife makes a really good pizza and so we probably have pizza once a week and that's fantastic pizza and beer after a race is a really good show it's yeah. a great thing to go for yeah and the last one if you couldn't do your current sport what would your alternative sport be um that's a tough one i'm not good at that um so i was struggling with Achilles issues and I basically, so I was a runner for my whole life. And I was, mm. I, a doctor was like, all right, try taking three months off of running. And I was like, I don't miss any days of running. So I went and I bought a bike that day. And then I joined like a place where I could swim and started biking and swimming. So of course it turns into triathlon. Uh, but so I, I made one switch. Uh, and so I know it's possible to like switch again if I had to maybe something like rock climbing would be really, really cool. I've enjoyed that in the past. I think that would be amazing. Um, but it would, you know, I would hate to miss out like maybe like hiking or something. I mean, I I love being out on the trails. So uh, it's, 
it would be hard to just do rock climbing and not, I guess that's kind of similar if you were to do outdoor rock climbing, but yeah. something like that, yeah. I will ask you a bonus question though. Okay. As a triathlete, which of the three disciplines is your least favorite and why? Uh, I like all of them. Um, so, okay, how about this? Um, I'll tell you why I don't like each one. Uh, okay. Running is my favorite by far yeah. because I grew up running. I still love running. You can just throw on your shoes and go out the door, but yes. it beats your body up a lot. And so, um, and right now I have Achilles issues and things like that. And so it's the one that I could, I, it's the one sport that I'll never give up on trying to do. Even if I'm just 80 years old and I'm walking out there, I call it running or something like that. I'll keep trying to run. Um, but it, it tends to beat me up a bit. And so that's the one dislike on running. Biking, uh, I love biking. I love going fast. I love um, all different aspects of it. Like I even love mountain biking and you know, I don't love cyclocross as much, but there's so many different aspects of biking that are really fun. Uh, I don't love how expensive biking is. And the yeah. <laughs> thing that the thing that scares me the most about cycling is the uh, dealing with traffic in cars. Actually, you interviewed Ben, he got hit by a car mm -hmm. and uh, he broke his collarbone right at, the, you can see my shoulder probably, like I had a, a bike stem break and I went down on my shoulder hard. And so we basically both had um, shoulder injuries at the exact same time, which was crazy because we were both training for an Ironman at the same time too. We have a lot in common, but uh, it was, it, that's, you know, bike injuries are hard and it's like, mm -hmm. those are, those are totally different than running and running injuries are like, those are just overuse. Like biking, you just like mm -hmm. get hit by a car or, you know, you crash your bike going 30 miles an hour and you're going to the hospital and it's just like such a different situation, which is really scary. Um, and so I think that's one of those things where I could give up biking. Like I said, I could never give up trying to run, but like I could give up biking. Like I could be like, hey, you know what? My kids are little kids. I have three little mm -hmm. kids. Like I need to be able to pick them up and, you know, when they fall down, or spend time yeah, with them. totally like be a dad, right? Yeah. And biking, biking also takes a ton of time. Uh, swimming is probably in some ways the most boring of the three sports. Uh, so I could, that's another sport. Like I could give up swimming probably. Um, I've kind of grown to love it. There's definitely something peaceful about being under the water. Uh, and this is where like, I'm going to sell you on the sport of swimming at some point. <laughs> okay. It's like there is some, and I've, I'll figure out a way I'll make a video and we'll talk about like how, you know, therapeutic it is to just like be underwater, do this, like put a pair of fins on and just do some like dolphin kicking underwater. And you're going to be like, oh, I see what Matt's talking about. There is something magical about this, right? Like the whole world is closed off to you. Like you're underwater and you're just mm -hmm. kind of at peace. It's um, I'd say it's a, a very like meditational type, you know, experience. And uh, yeah, so swimming is great, but also, you know, you're staring at a black line. Like you're not, you know, you're, you're at the pool. Yeah, and there's kind of no scenery, bottom. is there? Yeah. <laughs> Where, I mean, open water swimming is slightly different because you do have these beautiful lakes that you're swimming in. And I, I mean, I, I adore that side of things, but the, you know, staring at the black line, it's pretty boring. It's not the most exciting thing that you can do with your spare time. And so, you know, if I had to, I could give up swimming. Although I do think it's very easy on your body and there's, there's no risk of getting hit by a car typically. Uh, and so there's a lot of pluses to swimming mm. as well. It is, it's hard for me to say like, oh, you know, which sport is my least favorite um, and which one is my favorite? That's a tough question. And I don't think I did a good job answering it. <laughs> no, but you do, you did do, do quite a good job at starting to sell me on swimming. Swimming is <laughs> definitely not my strong point. Um, well, brilliant. Thank you very much for taking the time to have a chat with me. Um, oh, you're so welcome. It's been absolutely brilliant chatting to you.